Well, this is just cool. If, if you ever wanted to get somebody hooked on ice fishing, I, I think a, a surefire way to do it would be to get in a situation where you can sight fish, where you can just drill a hole, look down the hole and see fish. I mean, it's just fascinating. One of my favorite things to do. And so we're down here in northern Iowa. We're on Clear Lake here specifically, and just really good panfish water. I mean, there's big bluegills, crappies, there's white bass, yellow bass. You just see these pencil reeds behind us. There's literally 18 inches of ice, maybe a couple of feet of water underneath the ice, but these fish are just rolling through right underneath the ice. And it is something that you can stare and do all day. What we've noticed over the last couple weeks with the thaw um, happening, a lot of these fish have started to push into the shallows. As you can see, we're fishing super shallow. We're in the bulrushes. If you camera it, you're gonna see a lot of fish traveling through here. We're gonna fish with uh, small tungsten and jigs, crushed up wax worm on there or plastics. Hopefully we can put a couple nice slabs on top of the ice today. That's the plan. I just missed one a second ago. So basically we're fishing about 18 inches below the ice. Um, it's only about 36 inches deep. So roughly three foot deep, fishing about halfway down. I'm jiggling it just enough to uh, make that waxworm twitch. You can actually see the jig down there playing as day, and then when the jig disappears, you know you got one on there. Just like that. Oh, good one too. We kind of get the best of both worlds here. We got a really good pan fishery. We get into the walleyes and muskies and all that, but our pan fishing has really, really turned on over the last few years. We're still far enough in the ice belt to get a really nice uh, long ice season in. I think this part of the country is just a, a nice little slice of heaven and we don't get the full traffic you might see way up north and it's just a nice little piece of pie we call home. You know, since you are leaning over the hole and, you know, everything's visual, you know, a lot of people are using shorter rods. You know, maybe a 28 to all the way down to even a 16 inch rod. I like to use a longer rod on that scale myself just because I find that if I move the rod up or down, I can swing the jig from side to side easier. It doesn't take much. I mean, basically it's just something to hold line because there's no strike indication at all. You're watching the fish come in, you're watching the jig. You'll see the wax from your bait disappear. The second gulp, you'll see that jig disappear. Then you set the hook. It's amazing also how fish can sit there and blow on your wax worm or they'll suck it in and spit it out and your strike indicator doesn't even move or there's no indication at all. So uh, sight fishing can be an eye opener. That's a good fish. Oh, look at that big bluegill. Oh, look at that. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Yeah, I was staring down the hole. I just saw this big, broad head come through. It almost looked like a bass. And they flare their gills. You just see those lips pucker up. And that's just a cool sight fishing opportunity. I think a lot of people overlook Iowa when it comes to fishing. You look at a map of Iowa and there's not a lot of lakes that jump out at you compared to if you go north into Minnesota, but there's some quality pan fishing opportunities in this area. It amazes me because there's a lot of people that fish and there's not necessarily a lot of water, but despite that, you know, there's some really quality fish. And so, especially when you come in and you fish these weeds, you know, I think the weeds in these thick pencil reed beds, that's kind of a buffer where these fish can bury in these weeds and kind of hide. Regardless, you know, you can find some really quality fish here in this country. Yeah, oh, here comes one. Here comes a fish right here. Oh. Tell you what, uh, as you can see, the crappie population is really good. Bluegill's really been turned on good and really looking forward to this spring bite coming up here real shortly. You know, we're here late season catching beautiful fish like this. This spring crappie bite's gonna be phenomenal here. Nothing better than taking advantage of some late season ice fishing. Jason Mitchell Outdoors is brought to you by these industry leaders. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, what's my favorite series of hubs? 
the Clam C Series shelters work best for us. What's our favorite ice sub shelter? The X Series from Clam Outdoor. Yeah. Choose the hub shelter that's right for you at Clam Outdoors. Pursue the ice. A Vexilar is responsible for more fish being caught than any other piece of equipment you could buy. You know what? Fishing lures and gadgets have come and gone over the last 60 years. But Vexilar's mission statement has been true, helping anglers catch more fish. Vexlar is the gold standard in sonar performance and reliability in flasher sonar technology. Your ice fishing adventure begins and ends with a Vexlar by your side. Happy 60th Vexlar! Introducing the Rise Float Suit with Motion Float Technology. Breathable, waterproof, secure, and all the features that make the difference. Waterproof cell phone pocket, rapid drain system, and maximum flexibility. Fish with security in the Rise Float Suit from Ice Armor by Clam. Rise above. Clam Outdoors. Pursue the ice. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a nice crappie. Here, look at this. Oh, come here. Oh, <laughs> that is just gorgeous. This is just cool. Sometimes you, and you look down and you just see that big mouth, that big head appear. It's almost like deer hunting where you're sitting in a tree stand and you're waiting. And that right there shows up. That is just cool. All right, I'm just gonna let that fish go. Oh, come on, <laughs> wrong way. There she goes, you know, we're using an eight inch hole just so you can have bigger range of view. No deeper than four feet of water. You know, there's weeds and reeds around us, but these fish push up shallow here, you know, come late ice. And the later it gets, the shallower these fish will push and the higher they'll ride. And so, you know, sometimes you'll see crappies come through so shallow, so tight to the ice that they almost have to turn on their side to hit that jig. And they're just, they're just riding right underneath the ice. And so really, a fun way to catch fish. So basically what we're doing out here is we're targeting these pencil weeds up along the shoreline. Um, most of these fish have already started to move in. Some of the bigger crappies and stuff will move in here a little bit later, but all of this area where we're fishing is really good spawning grounds. Ooh, as of about two weeks ago, these fish weren't quite up in here yet. So we just really noticed the, the change after last week's warm up. And we got two inches of rain just the other day, which we're starting to see a lot of melt. And uh, that's pushing these fish up shallow to feed. Nice little bluegill there. They're just making that migration up into their spawning grounds. They're, they're coming in first to try to figure out where their beds are gonna be at. Find some good spawning grounds, you're gonna find a lot of good fish this time of the year, and especially this spring. There's a nice one. Nice. Yeah, I tell you what, what we noticed today is downsizing our bait and our presentation. Um, you know, these guys are up here feeding shallow up in these weeds. They're feeding on bug stuff like that. So crushed up wax worm uh, with a little Wonder Bread jig or gold jig's been really good so far. So I tell you what, that's the fun of catching crappies right there. Typically, when we're out here targeting these panfish, we like a light, medium light action rod, something with kind of a power noodle like you see here. The dead meat's been a really good rod for us. It's got that nice soft tip, but it's got a really solid backbone. It can land big walleyes, but it also can land a lot of nice panfish. Paired up with just a decent spinning reel. And then as far as line goes, I run basically a fluorocarbon line. 
uh, anywhere from two to four pound. Three pounds kind of my magic number. Even when I'm walleye fishing, guys, just a light, fast rod like this, this exact same setup, three pound test, is more than enough in Iowa to, to catch pretty much any species you're gonna see down there. There's a lot of different nuances that we've seen with the shallow water sight fishing when the fish are so shallow, they're so close to you. I've seen situations where you couldn't wear ice cleats, you know, or you couldn't drag a fish house across the lake and you'd spook the fish. You know, th this time of the year when the ice gets really honeycomb, it seems like you can get away with a lot more noise. But that being said, there's some advantages if you can use a house just because you can block the glare off the hole and, and see down better. The other thing I like to do is use an eight inch or even a 10 inch auger just so you can get a bigger window so you can see out to the sides further. You know, just from the entertainment aspect alone, it's definitely worth coming out here because sight fishing is just so much fun. I, I never get tired of watching fish swim by. Oh, here, here's a nice, that looks like a crappie. Come on, eat it. There we go, oh yeah. Here, look at this. Come on, oh, that's fun stuff. You know, this is just a, a great education. You know, as far as just learning about your presentation, learning how to quiver the jig, learning how to hook your wax worm on, look, learning how to hook your soft plastic on. You can learn so much when you can watch the fish and watch your presentation. Just the education, just the tuition alone is worthwhile. You know, making a trip to a destination like this or spending time on a body of water where you can do a lot of sight fishing. Oh! <laughs> You know, when it comes to crappies especially, this is one of my absolute favorite patterns. You get late ice, these fish start to push back in areas where they'll eventually spawn, and you start to find them in really shallow water. And when you find them in these pencil reeds especially, you know, when you're in, you know, li literally a foot, two feet of water underneath the ice, I mean, it, it is just fun. Every time a fish pokes its nose into the hole, you know, and you're, it's just the ultimate game of cat and mouse because you can see everything. It's just cool. Having an underwater camera definitely cuts a lot of time and keeps you from drilling a lot of extra holes that you don't need. Being able to come into an area, scan it, look for fish quick, see what's in there, and then move on to the next one if you don't see anything. Like right there, nothing in this one. So what we'll do is we'll just jump into this next hole. And basically what we're gonna do is work the edge of this weed line all the way around. I'm looking for one fish right now. When we're using these cameras, when you're in dense vegetation like this, just seeing one fish probably is gonna tell you there's more than just one around. Um, you can see how thick it is behind me here. Those fish stack up and sit tight in that thick cover there. Here's a fish. Yeah, nice largemouth right there. Cruising on by. Too bad we're looking for crappies. It's your lucky day, buddy. Awesome, that's the best part about a camera, guys. It don't have to be a crappie, it don't have to be a walleye. Just seen a big fish come up to the camera. Someday I'm waiting for a musket to come up and go latch onto that thing. Oh. Boy. They, oh, here, yeah, here he comes. They get wrapped up in the weeds and everything else. It's kind of combat fishing, but look at that. Look at that. Just a beautiful fish. I've been mixing up. I've been playing with some wax worms, red maggots, saw plastics, and I think the biggest thing is just finding a hole and finding a weed clump where there's fish. But we've been just kind of bouncing along this reed edge here, and these fish are just coming out and eating. You know, you're in shallow water, so you don't need necessarily a very big or heavy jig, but despite that, you know, I'm still using tungsten. Reason being is because this is combat fishing. When you get in these pencil reeds and these stalks, a lot of times I like to use three and four pound tests just because these fish can wrap up on the stalks and get off, especially if you get a big crappie or a big bluegill. And so the neat thing about this is you can see your presentation. And so you're gonna learn a tremendous amount in a hurry. It's a crash course in panfish ice fishing education in the sense that you can see how the wax worm, how it's hooked affects the presentation. You can see the jigging stroke. You can see everything. You can see how fish respond. You can see what fish like and what they don't like. And so that's the neatest thing about sight fishing is that you can see enough where you can take that education, take that tuition, and apply it to all your ice fishing, you know, the rest of the year when you can't sight fish. 
Ooh, nice crappie. I just seen him. Nice crappie. Oh. <sighs> yeah, so as you can see here, I switched to a Mackie. A Mackie Mackie, it's called. Just a white one. We were using some wax worms. I'm going to let this guy go. So what I've been doing is I've been threading on this, this Mackie bait. I'll show you here. Once you... So you got two pieces, it's got five tentacles on it. I'm just coming right through the end, thread it on nice, so it hangs nice and horizontal. And then I've been pulling that knot back too, so the bait hangs horizontal in the water, just like that. And then that bait will hang nice and horizontal in the water column. Um, I've noticed just from time and experience that when the bait is hanging straight up and down, we have a lot harder time getting these fish to bite. So you can see right there how it's hanging horizontal. That's just great. Look at all them tentacles moving. I'm barely moving the rod tip. You're getting a lot of action out of that bait. I'll tell you what, it's really cool when you can see them fish come in and just smack it. A lot of times what we're noticing, these fish are coming in shallow and they'll come in and they'll just nip the rear end of your plastic or your bait. So what we do is we, a lot of times we'll dip that rod down, give it just a little bit of slack and let that bait dangle in their mouth and what they're doing. And then what they'll do is just and then they'll suck the rest of that in. That's the advantage of being able to sight fish is being able to notice that it's either a half bite or a full bite. So one little thing that you learn, you know, a lot of guys when they're not being able to sight fish, they sit there and jig it, they feel the bite. A lot of times those fish just don't grab the hook yet. So it's nice to be able to learn from that. And, and sight fishing is just a great learning tool for, for beginners, novice, experts, just for everybody. So. You know, if you can imagine these weeds and these pencil reeds, there'll be a wall of pencil reeds where there'll be clumps of thicker, heavier weeds where there's these dark shadows. And a lot of times when the sun comes out especially, you'll see those crappies just buried down in that thicker, heavier cover. Then you'll see clouds roll through and those fish will cruise around a little bit. And so sometimes you can wait out key spots, but the other thing you can do is just cherry pick the best spots. Use the underwater camera to identify those key spots. Basically what you do is you catch a couple fish, you wear out your welcome, and you can either sit there a long time and let new fish recharge that spot, or you can just go to the next spot. And so what we offered to do today, high skies, you know, we just popped around. And what that typically meant is we'd catch maybe two, three, four fish out of a hole. We'd wear out our welcome after about five, 10 minutes. So we just moved to a new spot. And over the course of the day, those fish add up. Come on. There it is. Show it off, baby. Oh. There's a nice fish right there. Mackie Plastics connected with that one. One thing we really noticed today is that these fish are, you kind of pluck them off one or two at a time. So we got a bunch of holes drilled along this reed line here and we're just hole hopping back and forth. We'll let him go quick. You pick one off here, one off there and it seems to be going pretty good. We're starting to get a nice little pile of them built up. So good day. When we're targeting these fish out here, we do see a, a, a little bit better bite, sunrise and sunset. You know, that's just across the ice belt. That's pretty typical. But when you're in these weeds, a lot of times we can actually stay on that bite. We will catch quite a few fish throughout the day too. And just depends on cloud cover, sun, the pressure, that kind of thing, or if there's weather coming through. A lot of times we can target these fish throughout the day. And obviously you're gonna catch that morning and evening bite's gonna be really good and, and really get into a fair number of them during the day. It's good just a hole hop. That's what that auger is all about, drilling those holes, covering that water, and be looking for the fish. Don't wait for the fish to come to you. These fish in these pockets right here, they sit tight knit. They're not cruising a long ways. When you guys come into the weed bed and into looking for fish, you want to drill a bunch of holes right away. Don't drill one hole and fish it, drill one hole and fish it. We're only in three feet of water, so you drill one hole, those fish are going to scatter. So it's really important, drill 15, 20 holes, get them all scooped out, get them clean, ready to go, take your time, and then once everything starts to settle back down, then start going around and dabble in those holes. And we're fishing just underneath the ice today. Sometimes those fish are eight, 10 inches underneath the ice.
Oh, good one too. Well, one thing we've noticed over the last few hours here, we started off with that white Wonder Bread, but switched everything to a gold, and that seems to be doing the trick for us. So, white Mackie plastics with a uh, gold drop jig. Beautiful fish. Years past, most of our pan fishing came out deep in the wintertime. This lake has gone through a really uh, severe reno renovation project, and they dredged out this whole basin here. It used to be five foot deep, now there's water up to 28 feet deep, and those fish used to transition down into all of that uh, deeper water during the wintertime. But what we have noticed with the renovation project is the water quality has gone up. So with better water quality, what we're seeing is a lot more vegetation and a lot more weeds. Those fish, instead of transitioning out into those deep basins, now they're sticking to that five, six, seven, eight foot range, right where all the weeds are, and, and basically where all the food is. There we go, oh yeah. There we go, come on up here. Some of them come in pretty fast. You know, it's exciting. It, it reminds me so much of sitting in a tree stand where you're sitting there and you're waiting and then all of a sudden a deer comes walking by. In this scenario here, you're sitting and you're waiting and all of a sudden a big crappie comes swimming by. That being said, you know, you've only got, you know, maybe two, three feet of line out. And so when you stick these fish, these fish just go crazy. I mean, they've, they've got a lot of fight even when you land them and you're holding them in your hands because they're just up the hole almost instantly. With that being said, you know, you definitely want to have a, a softer rod and you want to have some stretch in your line just so that you can handle that short and tense fight because you, know, you don't want them to get wrapped up in the weeds, you don't want them to get wrapped up around the stalks, but at the same time, you know, if you just rip them right up, you're gonna tear their lips. And so it's just kind of a fine line between getting the fish up and uh, losing them sometimes in these, in these really thick weeds. <laughs> 